were criminals being promoted and uh, uh, being actually acknowledged in public spaces. That's that's a concern that we we as officers share, and of course we want to raise awareness. Uh, both in Serbia and in Kosovo, when when it comes to this issue, because we think that this is this is not uh, this is not what our politicians should be doing. They should not be promoting war criminals, people who have been convicted for war crimes, for crimes against humanity. So I'm sure we all know about the declaration of uh, uh, Prime Minister of Serbia. Uh, uh, actually, it was the uh, the, the um, President of Serbia about the uh, Rechak massacre, calling it a fabrication by international diplomats. So uh, that was uh, that was something that actually shows the fascist approach of the Serbian governments uh, uh, towards the treating war crimes, towards the uh, treating uh, the victims. That's also the case uh, for for government of Kosovo. Recently, last year we had. Prime Minister appointing as his uh, high political advisor a convicted war criminal, uh, Suleiman Selimi. Uh, but then he, and he was actually, when he was uh, re released, uh, uh, he was, uh, it was highly appraised by the president, by the prime minister, uh, calling him a, a hero of freedom. Uh, and uh, we as activists, both in Serbia and Kosovo, when, when we see such actions happening, we go out in the public squares and then we send out statements and we don't want to uh, these, these people, these war criminals, to be uh, appraised as, uh, as heroes. I can, I can sp speak mostly from, from my perspective as a, as a Serbian citizen and living in Belgrade. We are witnessing uh, a constant uh, barrage of uh, accusations and attacks against uh, these young activists for uh, pointing out that uh, giving public space to convicted war criminals. Uh, we had a recent, I'll just give a recent Belgrade example for, for anybody that doesn't know it, uh, there was a book launch, uh, uh, the book was entitled, unsurprisingly, Srebrenica wasn't a genocide or something like that by the uh, Serbian radical party's Vojslav Šešelj, who is a convicted war criminal, and it was held in downtown Belgrade at the premises of a local municipality uh, without any consequences, and this, uh, this man is a uh, member of parliament destructive process happening in the dark somehow has moved to Belgrade. So this pressure against freedom of media in my, I mean, me now as an outsider, looking on what is happening on this Serbian media landscape, as an outsider, uh, looking into Belgrade, I think now the pressure is in Belgrade. We've been seeing recently what, with what is happening with N1 television, this kind of media group than uh, uh, silencing the voices of those little free media islands. A few years ago, I had, three years ago, some, uh, if I recall well, I was delivering a short speech in Belgrade, and I said about, uh, I was, uh, my point was how it's important to keep the light on these little, how, uh, how important it is to keep the light on in a society like a huge light on. And what, is, what was bringing the light, uh, as I said, were little islands of freedoms. And I was talking about how it's important that those little islands of freedom continue to live and connect themselves. Being affiliated also to the Green Party um, uh, and, and talking about this topic, you can imagine that there's also a lot of um, yeah, interest and internal um, facing the past to, to be done because uh, the uh, 1999 decision by the then freshly elected uh, Social Democrat Green government to, um, to be a part of the uh, in intervention in the former Yugoslavia was a very uh, difficult one and the one that, that almost split the party and led to a very um, um, difficult debates uh, because the Green Party is a party that um, that grew from, uh, amongst others, the pacifist and peace uh, movement um, in the in the 1980s and and before that.